Balcony's first ever year-round bourbon was an inspiration. It all had to work together. A blend of carefully selected ingredients, Texas-sized pot stills, and creative people determined to find the absolute best way to usher a new whiskey along. When you discover how it pairs with a meaningful moment, suddenly the feeling of drinking great whiskey becomes a whole lot more. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Whiskey Neat, Spirited Conversations with Interesting People. I am your host, Christopher Hart. Now this this is an interesting uh, week, it's an interesting episode uh, you guys know my good friend Nate Woodruff, uh, Whiskey with a View. He's going to be joining us today, but we're also joined, uh, and I'm not even sure if she wants me to give her full name, but her Instagram handle is a little dab of bourbon. Over the past two weeks, there's been a situation that's developing that's really, really fascinating. There's a guy named Coach Jason Brown, right? Jason Brown, Coach JB from Netflix's Last Chance You, who started his own whiskey, although it's not technically a whiskey and i'm going to try to be as objective as possible here because anyone who follows the show anyone who knows me knows that i've been working in this industry for six years i try to be as factual as possible we all slip up sometimes so i'm going to try to be as objective as possible but when i heard about this story i actually went back and i've i have not heard her side at all i have not engaged with her yet we're going to engage with her today but i listened to his Instagram videos that he posted, and I am almost done with his episode on his podcast called Slap Dick Podcast that I, I strongly encourage you all to watch. Uh, the name of the episode that covers this, covers his side of the story, is called Haters Hate Hustlers. Essentially what happened was this. <clears throat> a little dab of bourbon posted a picture of his product, which by the way is not whiskey. He keeps calling it a whiskey brand. It's not whiskey. Uh, it even says on the label, real agave whiskey, which isn't a thing that doesn't exist. It's essentially a liqueur or to be completely technical, class type 641, whiskey specialties, distilled spirit specialties, somewhere in that realm of legal classification, which is a gray area. It's essentially whiskey flavored with agave nectar or agave, whatever, the, whatever you want to call it. It's a liqueur. Uh, but essentially, she posted on her Instagram a picture of the bottle, and uh, all that was said uh, was simply, well, this is quite the start to the week. Happy Monday, y'all. It was a picture of his, his product. Now, he has done everything possible to sick his followers on her to attack her. Uh, and of course the whiskey community has rallied behind her, uh, and, and, and there's been several articles written, crying misogynistic comments, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to get into it in a minute, but it is devolved into a complete shit show. His distributor dropped him. Uh, retailers have, have outcried against him. Uh, he's quite upset. Guess what? So is she. Uh, I, I've listened to his side. And there's a lot I want to address. And we're going to do that today. We're going to address several of his points, his conspiracy idea about why this is happening. And, and we're, we're just going to dig deep. So, uh, all right. So without further ado, let's get to a couple of, uh, let's pay the bills, as we like to say. Whiskey Neat is brought to you in part by Legion Bourbon, a first of its kind, super premium bourbon that melds Kentucky distilling tradition with Japanese blending excellence. It is a perfectly balanced yet complex and layered whiskey with a bright and unexpectedly long finish. And you can order a bottle today via your area through drizzly.com. Drink smart and always be safe. For the second week in a row, Sagamore Spirit joins us. This week's episode is brought to you in part by Sagamore Spirit Rye Whiskey. They are reviving the tradition of Maryland-style rye whiskey at their Baltimore farm and waterfront distillery. Each batch of their whiskey is hand-blended for consistency and aroma, flavor, and texture, creating a balanced flavor profile with notes of warm cinnamon, vanilla bean, honey, and spice. Find them online at sagamorespirit.com or visit your local retailer to pick up a bottle. And as always, please drink responsibly. You notice that the sponsors that we have for the show love to sign off with please be responsible. Uh, it's a good brand message. And this, this, this episode is going to be all about how brands should conduct themselves 
or in, in this case, shouldn't conduct themselves. Uh, last but not least, Glass Rev. Folks, one of the best uh, imported whiskey portfolios in the country is with Glass Rev Imports. They've been fans of the show for a long time. We've talked about them over and over again for more than two years. That is glassrev.com. Amroot, Waterford, Black Adder, Maury McDavid, Bimber, and so many top-rated unique whiskeys. My friends over at Glass Rev, Raj, Jane, and Bill, longtime fans of the show, big fans of theirs. The original three Dram Hunters are inviting you to, to be a fellow Dram Hunter, a group of folks passionate about finding great Drams. There's no cost here. It's, it's, it's completely free to sign up. Go to glassrev.com. Click at the top bar. Uh, please mention you heard about the show from Chris over at Whiskey Neat. And uh, they have set aside Murray McDavid rare tastings uh, for those who mention Whiskey Neat. Go to glassrev.com. That is glassrev.com and be a dram hunter today. All right. We'll get back. We'll get to the show. Without further ado, please welcome my guest, Nate Woodruff. And uh, I'll say Chrissy from a little dab of bourbon until we get until I make sure she's comfortable with her last name being shared. But uh, it's been quite a rough couple of weeks, and I, I I feel bad. No matter who's at fault here, we shouldn't be sicking, especially with the platform that 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 you have, Coach. You shouldn't be sicking. Uh, we'll we'll get to it. Let's, without further ado, let's get to the show. I just want to first start off by saying thank you so much for doing the show. Thanks. Uh, Nate, thanks for being just always the badass that you are uh, and show, and bringing attention to something that needed attention being brought to. So uh, I, I approached this a little different. I, 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 I didn't, I did read what you posted, uh, Nate, originally, but I wanted to approach this from the from his side first so i'm almost done with the podcast episode i heard his side of the story i've watched some of his videos on his instagram account i'm so sorry you had to do that uh well actually it, it's amazing it's ama <laughs> like like i i think i think oftentimes we use the word awesome to mean a good thing but awesome just means you're left in awe yeah and and i i am I am in awe right now. Did you listen to the podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so. Oh my God. It is insane. So uh, for those who don't know the story, let, let, let's get a, a background from Chrissy. Let's, let's, let, I want to hear what's the inciting incident. And I know, I, I, you know, I know they say, you know, be as objective or be as honest as possible. It's going to be hard to do, but, <laughs> but, but tell me what, how this started and, and where we began. Um, you know, we basically began with uh, me starting my day at work on a Monday and um, the sales rep brought me the new product that came in. Um, we had only brought in two bottles uh, to our store and it was something that, you know, I knew who it was. I knew the story behind it. I knew the meaning behind the name. Uh, however, to see it in person first thing on the mon Monday morning was kind of the way that like I thought about it. I was like, whoa, like this is really quite an interesting way to start the week. And and that was that that was almost verbatim the caption, correct? Like you literally just posted a picture of the bottle and just said, uh, this is how we can we pull that up on the yeah. are we able to see it on camera? The viewers. Uh, we can, we can have jacket yeah post. all right so yeah and, and uh yeah i'll take a Good screenshot because her, her account went private but essentially uh where is my phone uh, here we go uh the caption verbatim was simply well dot 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 this is quite the start of the week uh a surprised emoji face happy monday y'all you didn't say anything insulting no you didn't say anything about the brand Nothing about the brand, nothing with how it tasted, um, what my thoughts or opinions were on it. Just it was an interesting way to start the week. And that was it. Yeah. So it, for those who aren't aware, uh, which I was not aware, uh, believe it or not, despite the show being on ESPN, I don't actually I'm not big into sports. <laughs> but Coach Jason Brown is a Netflix reality show star for Last Chance You. Uh, he's gone on, he's got his own podcast called Slapdick Podcast and a spirit called Slapdick Real Agave Whiskey. Now, as I covered in the intro, there's no such thing as Real Agave Whiskey. 
that's not it's not a thing. Yeah. Uh, it's not a classification within our system. And I actually pulled uh, the federal label approvals for him. And they, he's got like six. The very first one from 2019 was approved as a straight bourbon whiskey. Mm-hmm. And then it was approved. It, 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 keep, it keeps getting worse. So I, I think, and this is just my assessment of the situation. I think uh, as, as Nate can attest to this, I'm not, I'm not super well versed with you, Christy. We've not ever actually actually interacted, correct? Correct. Yep. So but we've been following each other on Instagram for quite some time. I knew of you, never interacted. I'm not sure what your role is within the spirits world, other than being a fun Instagram account to follow that knows quite a bit a lot of, about whiskey. Um, but I know Nate has worked for many brands. Um, for my, and this is just uh, my assessment the label approvals kept getting a bit more flavored moving away from straight bourbon, moving into flavored whiskey category. Uh, The final being a distilled spirit specialty, which is what is on the market right now, or what was on the market until recently. And that is a real agave whiskey, which is essentially a whiskey that he flavored with agave flavoring. Correct. Mm -hmm. Um, He, He said uh, shortly after he got very upset, continue with the story. So you posted that. How did he end up? What happened next? Um, So basically what I did was because I am a buyer, a spirits buyer for my store. I uh, Mondays are very hectic, chaotic, connecting with new products that are walking in the store, reps, salesmen, a whole shebang. So I had tagged it, forgot it. But when I had tagged it, um, it wasn't very clear what the account was. But being that I knew who he was, that's why I went and tagged the podcast, because I thought it's still him. It's who he is. He's a representation of that brand. Um, And then I just left it and forgot it. And when I came back, it was a lot of questions that, you know, people had a lot of, you know, how did the TTB approve that label? What was, you know, what was behind the name? Uh, There were females who were offended by it. Um, And then there were real genuine questions because, you know, we're in this whiskey community and it's a lot of very strong whiskey enthusiasts and very well-educated whiskey enthusiasts at that. So to see a product labeled as agave whiskey, everyone kept asking the question. Um, I didn't respond. I was working and the only response that I saw was his response to everybody else asking these questions. So, and this is, this is an interesting disconnect because by starting a brand, you are coming into our world. Correct. Something that we, we now have a more educated consumer than we've ever had. There are far more people who are familiar with how approvals work, with how labels work, how to pull those labels. They're open to the public. Anyone can pull them. And absolutely, when you see uh, his his product, which I'm not familiar with the term slapdick. I assume it's something to do with coach or, you know, being a coach and being vulgar with, I assume like an idiot, like don't be a slapdick or something along those lines. Um, but whenever you have something labeled real agave whiskey, I have never seen anything like that. And that's the first thing I noticed, even despite the name, not knowing the history of, of this, how this thing blew up, just seeing your post Mm -hmm. as a fan. The first thing that I see is real agave whiskey and question marks start, start popping off. So it is normal. Um, Now he's under the belief that this was a calculated attack to destroy a brand to destroy the competition. And I want to give some perspective for those who are watching. I am being a little biased because I do think my, my assessment of the situation is that you are innocent in this and he is not innocent in this, but I am going to try to be as honest and as, as uninsulting as possible with what I'm about to say. He, if you listen to that episode, uh, haters loved, uh, what's it called? Haters loved, uh, whatever it was, his, his latest episode of Slapdick Podcast. That's going to be my next tattoo, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, he, he's, he's saying that he sold out of 40 cases in two days and that the distributor placed an order for another 100 cases. And he was very, very proud. Did not think that it, there's no – he even says, do you tell me how many brands have out there have sold that many in two days? I, and I'll tell you there's probably not. Is what he, this is his, my impression of him. And, I, and this is where the objective side of me comes through. 
That is so infinitesimally nothing. <laughs> and to answer his question directly, every brand. I, in fact, I have never seen a brand launch with that many, that least amount of case. Like I've never seen so little amount launched for a brand. Uh, I mean, even Scotty Pippen, uh, I mean, I, I've launched several brands. We, the first one we launched was a premium rum brand and it was 200 cases and they were sold immediately. So uh, to answer his question, lots of brands, every brand I've ever seen has sold 40 cases that fast. In fact, a little known thing that, and this is how out of touch with reality that he is. How do you not know that? How do you know? Do you know what a barrel pick is? Because most stores who do barrel selections and, and, and for those who don't know, a barrel selection is where you go to a distillery, they line up a bunch of barrels and you taste through and pick your favorite one. They then bottle all of that one barrel for you mm -hmm. and they send it to a store for you to buy. It happens all the time. It's a massive part of this industry to do a barrel program. In fact, yeah. I'm going to Kentucky and at the very beginning of September to do five barrel picks, four roses, Elijah Craig. I mean, we're, we're going to be buying literally those five barrel picks, four roses, Elijah Craig barrel proof. You know, I know Nate knows, Chrissy knows those are going to be instant sellouts. And that collectively is more than a hundred cases. And by instant sellout, I mean, we did, uh, we've done several barrel picks that were north of uh, 300 bottles. By the way, what is for 40 cases? 40 times six, 240. 240. Yeah, that's an Elijah Craig small batch barrel, yeah. 240 bottles. Those sell out all the time, all the time. They have a complete barrel program. Anyways, I don't mean to beat this to death, but to answer your question, uh, that is not impressive. And to be completely honest, in terms of wanting to, to, to kill the competition, you're not even on the radar of anyone. I mean, I, that's not even something that would be threatening is what I'm trying to say. Um, but sorry, that's my commentary. I know that you are not doing this. I'm just, I, th I'm listening to this podcast with him and I, he's so out of touch with reality that I'm sitting there like, I cannot believe you're saying this. And then he, he, so get to the part where he DMs you because there, I have some, he addresses that in this podcast. He actually blames the DMs on, and this is his words, not mine on a black kid that he had to fire because of it. He said he, he had a little black kid that was working for him. He had to fire him because he was just trying to mimic him and be a, a shit talker and went to your DMs and said some inappropriate things. And so he had to fire him because of that. But then he goes on to say, I'm rehiring him to do right by that kid because I don't care what anyone says. I'm going to rehire him. Uh, anyways, so what does he send to you? What, what happens next? Well, I mean, the first thing is the fact that he makes the comment before he goes into the DMs. Um, on that Monday post, he made his inappropriate comments. Um, and then the next day, I'm sitting at work, and that's when the DMs started. And the DMs were just straight out coming out, what do I do, questioning who I was, um, you know, that I was a shitty salesperson, for the fact of, you know, wanting to be able to just put this out. Do I just buy stuff and just get out there and bash it? And I've never said one word either way, whether it was a good product or not a, a good product. There, He actually mentions at one point and says, it's a conflict of interest for you to be giving the commentary on it, but you didn't actually give any commentary on it. Didn't. I've never said one word. There was no calculated attack. It was the comment section of your post of fans confused by the packaging and the bottle and the name, which by the way, you have to understand that name is incendiary. That's, that's his brand. It's he's incendiary. I've talked about this before. They're, they're, the reason why reality show people be, who become famous is not because they're boring. It's because they're entertaining. Mm -hmm. And I can't think of a single reality show celebrity 
who wasn't incendiary or inflammatory or a hot mess in some regard. Uh, they're, they're meant to be exciting and, and to rile you up. Uh, and he knows that. Mm-hmm. So he starts harassing you in your DMs. And of course, that leads to you screenshotting. Screenshotting everything. And then, um, you know, instead of responding, I just took everything and put it out on Instagram and didn't even like say anything else. I didn't think it was, you know, other than the fact of like, this is like just shock from the fact that I can't remember the exact words that I said at this point, but just shocked over the fact that a brand was reaching out to me and speaking to me that way, like without knowing who I was, what I did for the store, making the assumptions, um, and just being super defensive immediately. And what happened after you posted it and just said, look, here, I'm getting harassed, basically. I mean, this is an amazing, amazing whiskey community to be a part of. It took on something more than I anticipated. And um, this community came out and just openly started commenting on that post that he uh of the screenshots and just in full support um there were many who actually continued to try and like help him help him understand like she never said anything like this is us the consumer the people that you're asking to purchase your product for um we're asking the questions she never said anything bad everyone kept asking and then he went on the attack to any person who commented on that harassed those people, went into their DMs and harassed them. Do, do, do you know of any men that, and, and this is what I'm getting at, because this is what I'm noticing. I made a post today about it and uh, he responded and then blocked me, but he didn't share it to his profile. He didn't attack me in his stories. In fact, the only people he has been attacking in his stories are women. Correct. And you even when you shared the screenshot of his messages, all you said was, I just got this lovely message and now it makes this whiskey less appealing. Mm-hmm. It, the consumers who were appalled at the product itself are also the ones that started crying the word misogyny. Yes. Right? Like th- this is inappropriate. Your, your commentary is sexual in nature and, and, and uh, just you wouldn't be taking this same approach with, with a man. In fact, it would be called homophobic, right? Like that's, that's how that works. When you, when you take this approach, it's one or the other. And uh, Nate, who's on the call today, looking handsome as ever with that beard, uh, Nate took it upon himself to use his platform to call it out because it was absolutely heinous. And then it took off. Uh, I, I don't remember the name of the article or the, was it whiskey? What was it? Raider. Whiskey, whiskey Raiders. Um, so then it leads to them getting, did you reach out to a distributor or any stores and ask them not to carry the product? Not once. Um, I didn't ask for any of this um, at all. I, I did have meetings in regards to um, the harassment side of things um, with those that were carrying the product at that time. Um but it was only local to me. It wasn't anything that was uh, a vindictive thing. I don't know him from, like if he walked past me in the street, I wouldn't know who he was. Um, so it's, it's not anything other than the fact that, you know, I am the buyer for a store. It's a representation of the, you know, it's a representation of the fact that you continue to carry this and you're going to condone it. I didn't ask them specifically, you know, go ahead. You need to do this. This is what you need to do. All I did was all when, when all of this stuff started happening, I went downstairs to the shelf, removed the two bottles that we had brought in. It was two bottles and then gave it right back to the rep. And I asked him to please get it out of the store and we would not be carrying it. Which is, which is extremely reasonable. Uh, there's one thing I have learned in this, um, in the spirits industry, and that is it's, it matters who you upset 
right? Like whether you've got a big chain store or a small mom and pop store, if you offend the owners or the buyers, they're not going to want to carry your shit. They're not going to want to support you. And that's completely reasonable, but you didn't, the idea that you have all this power and that you, this is a calculated attack to ruin the competition. Well, one, you don't have a brand, you have a liquor store and the success of his brand selling well in your store is a win-win for both of you. Right. I mean, it's, it's just, that's the thing is that like, you know, there's no competition unless you're competing in the flavored whiskey category. You're not competing against the big boys. Like, the ones that you were mentioning earlier, like your Elijah Craig and your Heaven Hill, and you're not competing against those people. You're, you're not even on the radar. No. So, you know, to take it and, and to think that I do have this kind of power, and I think really um, the consumers are speaking. The whiskey enthusiasts, they're out there. They're the ones that are speaking and saying this is uncalled for. We don't want to participate or do we want to support a brand who will openly you know, attack women like this. Well, it, the thing that, and, and listen, uh, to me, this, this showcases, I would not hire somebody in a professional work environment, like a corporate structured environment who was say eccentric or peculiar because they're not a right fit, right? Like I don't expect a, a, I, you know, I did a little background search on the guy, you know, uh, he, he's a, he's a football coach. I wouldn't expect him to have any sense of any inflammatory in nature. I'm not going to ask him to run my company. He can run a brand that's just him and hire people to work for him and he could treat them like shit. Cause that's, that's, you know, that's your direct influence, but I'm not expecting the guy to, 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 to run a spirits brand. He even asked, like halfway through this podcast, he said, how many women, and here's the thing about the misogyny comments. He, he released a statement last night. Let's, let's back up a minute because there's so many layers to this. Uh, first, he released a statement, a video uh, calling out the haters. And then he, last night, he actually tagged you and is trying to sick his fans on you. What kind of harassment have you received from that? It's been, um, it's been a lot. It's really been a lot. Um, I've had people, you know, text typing to me in my DMs all in capital letters, almost like, you know, shouting at me, uh, calling me a can I say it? <laughs> yeah, you could say it because okay. we're going to censor it for the radio, but you can. Okay. Um, call calling me a, a dumb bitch, an ugly fucking cunt. Um, I have no idea what I'm talking about that I need uh, that I'm a hypocrite because they've gone through and scrolled through some of my uh, previous posts, taking things out of context and not understanding a lot of it. Um, and just, I will find you, I will come to your work. Um, and, um, and, and so on and so on. It, it's just been a lot. And it, it's one of the main reasons I, I went private because I mentally, I can't, that's just too much. And that's, I didn't ask for oh, that. Yeah. So up to this point, you haven't, you didn't initiate the inciting incident. You just posted a photo of his bottle. The public's reaction instigated DM attacks mm -hmm. in which you shared them, which you rightly should, which led to the whiskey community as a whole, which you didn't ask them to do it no. as a whole. They're like, Hey, this is a problem. This guy's a problem. This, this method is a problem. This is not okay. Mm -hmm. To wit, he's even more angry at you. Yes. When it's not you telling people that, uh, I haven't heard you say the word misogyny. I, we said the word misogyny. Mm -hmm. uh, and calling you sweetie and telling you that maybe she's looking for, she needs to find a boyfriend. Like that, that's what misogyny, the, the, you, are you hearing yourself? And I, he responded to me, I said, hey man, the, I'm, I'm not reacting off of what she's saying. I'm reacting off of what your, your videos that are still posted, they're still up. 
you know, he, he's, he's screenshotting old posts and trying to call you a hypocrite. You're not the one that ever cried misogyny. It was the, the public. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you're being a hypocrite. You're not asking for any of this. In fact, you're asking people to just leave you alone, but it's him that continues to post to do a whole podcast on it. And I'll be honest, listen, guys, he could probably use the views. Go, go watch. I went and pulled up the YouTube video. It's been out for a couple of days. The guy's got 200 plus views. Uh, so it's surprising to me how someone with a verified account could sick so many people on you and, and yet give his side of the story to basically a wall. Uh, go watch the episode. None of it makes sense. Uh, I, I can, I can, based off the fact that he keeps doubling down and tripling down in his videos, this kid did not write these co comments. They're from him. Uh, the videos are him. Even if he, even if the kid did, let's just take that aside. What about the videos of him addressing it and being sexist and misogynistic in those videos? Is that the kid as well? Or is that him? Cause we can physically see the big pile of shit talking trash to you. It's, it's, I just don't, I don't. It's very upsetting. Come on. Let's rise. We are the ones with the bond and baby, you can shake it till you break it in the morning light. Come on. Get prepared as soon as you hit the playback. We about to ignite every one of them haystacks. If you ain't ready, fool, you should make tracks. It's the beat rock, no time to fake jack. Uh, uh, rock it out on. Get a sip of the rye. Nate hasn't said anything. Nate, say something. <laughs> oh, this is this is this is Christy's story. Like, uh, I mean, my my part in it is I just said, send me the bottle. I'm gonna do what I do best, and let's 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 call him out. And that's what I did. Well, uh, and and I'll tell you a little dose of reality. Even if you move through 40 cases, and even if you your your distributor ordered another 100 cases distributors and stores have put up with worse people or similar people to your type if they believe that the brand would make them money there have been many cases of like hey you should do something about this and they drag their feet because it's making them money for a distributor to drop your brand so fucking fast means they didn't believe in it to begin with. And it's not worth the trouble. 40 cases is absolutely nothing. And, and I, I'm saying this because I, and I, even in the intro, I would love to sit down with him. I'd love to have him on the show and break. I'd love to just break down that episode statement by statement and be like, all right, pause it. This doesn't, this is, does this is so out of touch with reality. This doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'm so furious, but I, I, it's all happened today for me. So my excitement for this is like, it's overwhelming. Uh, I'm so sorry that you have to go through this. I know that you've seen the overwhelming amount of support, but even with all the support, it doesn't take away from the very, very real and very scary messages you've received. And I'm sorry for that. I think you're going to be okay. I think it'll pass. I, I don't honestly believe, and I, for those who don't know, she was very nervous to even do the episode because of some of the DMs you've gotten that, that are very scary and very real. And um, I want, so if there was a way, I want so badly to, to take his attention off of you because it's not, it's not justified. Hey, Chris, we've, we've tried that. I've tried that. The guy won't respond to men. He won't, uh, he'll just block them immediately. I basically gave myself, I was like, I'm the target, hit me. Like, I really don't care. Like, I am, you, I was brought up to deal with bullies. And that's what this guy is, a bully. And he will not respond. He won't speak. He reported, uh, I posted three times on Whiskey with a View. Every single time it was taken down for harassment and bullying because it's a verified account. Posted on my personal. That one stayed up, thankfully. Um, but... Uh, unfortunately, this guy is, is all he thinks of is, is he wants to block men from speaking out because he wants his narrative to say it's a gang of women coming after him. Men don't care. Men don't care. Well, we do care. And in this community, we're, we're very, very, very pissed off and plenty of actions been taken. Uh, we're making sure that, you know, 
I don't, I don't see this guy getting a booth at whiskey live anytime soon. I'll put it that way. Yeah. And that's the thing I think he needs to realize is no matter, no matter how you feel, um, the, the industry is so much more smaller than I think he realizes. Uh, he, he goes on the rant about 30 minutes into the podcast uh, on Spotify <clears throat> about how he's not misogynistic, but that it isn't that it's a man's world and that, you know, you, you, you need men for distribution. You need men for brands. You need, I'm like, do you not know who Jackie Zykan is? Or, you know, I mean, there's countless examples, Allison Park, right? Like, I mean, there's, there's, there's a thousand examples of women in this industry that, the, the, and let me clue you in a little bit, that the industry consumer wise is largely male, but the most impactful current industry people is largely female. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah. a, that's across the board. And, yeah. and I don't, under, like, you realize that you're playing to the audience but the people who control the industry are largely female and those who aren't female are going to side with the females. I mean, you're talking about a, a generations old industry that, that was born within bars and the time in which harassment, sexual assault, massage, these things were so prevalent that you may not have realized it as you smoke your cigar in your car, you may not have realized it, but the industry has been trying really hard to clean this up for a while, you're not doing yourself any favors. Even if the audience believes you, the industry doesn't. Mm-hmm. And, and, and uh, I, if I can just, get, the, the problem is, is you can't rationalize with crazy. The, the reason why people are so famous within uh, the realm of reality TV shows is because they're not well. I, I, I love Dr. Drew and he's talked about this. He goes, it's, uh, they're, they're not well. And this guy is thinks he's going to get a rally of I had someone commented on my posts or like, I'm going to go out and buy more of his bottles just because of your post. I'm like, good luck finding it. <laughs> like, what, <laughs> like, what, what are we doing? Like, you know, your, your story, let, let me back up a second. You started the story with saying that you guys got your hands on how many bottles? Two. Two bottles. Does that, do, is it because you asked for two or is that because that's, well, yeah. So basically, um, I will. So I'm the buyer. I don't own the store. <laughs> um, but the the way that I do things is I do try to constantly think about my consumers that are coming in. It's not always about me at all. Um, my taste profile is very opposite of, of that particular product, as is a lot of other products like gins and vodkas and. But my philosophy is to always have at least one, maybe two bottles on my shelf because I am going to have that one person that comes in. They're going to ask for it. And being the fact that he has history in Kansas, the fact that um, I know more likely than not, I'll have that one person come into my store looking for that bottle. And rather than turning that person away, I at least have that sitting there on the shelf. Um, So... I only did two and I said, that's all I will do. And when it's gone, it's gone. And that was it. Yeah. The, the, I don't know how many stores are in Kansas, but um, and, and a little backstory for those who don't know how these rollouts work. Scotty Pippen released his bourbon digits, but guess where he released it? Chicago. Chicago. Right. Mm-hmm. So what you do when you want to start a celebrity brand, you want to test market it. Yes, you have a following in this market. Uh, or what market do you want to launch your product in that's going to give you the best chance of a national rollout? Well, for Scotty Pippen, it's going to be Chicago. Well, for Jason Brown, who, from my understanding, lives in California, mm-hmm. right? Why would he release his bourbon, not bourbon, not whiskey? Why would he release his product in Kansas? Well, because he has a history there. He's more famous there, right? So... You release 40 cases, which again is surprisingly low. For, if your best bet, your biggest following is in Kansas, 40 cases is astronomically, infinitesimally microscopic, is, is mind blowingly small. It's not impressive. And that is objective, regardless of how you feel about anything. Um, there's a great 
uh, uh, a great brand. Well, I wouldn't say a great brand, but there's a, a Texas brand called Devil's River. Mm-hmm. Three years ago, uh, which was year two in the market, they did 50,000 cases. And similarly, but at least that, at least that was bourbon, right? So a bit more following for the consumer. Um, I, I lost my train of thought, but I, I was, I was, I just realized I'm rambling. Um, <laughs> we just, <laughs> we just know that 40, 40 cases is like, as a, as someone that worked as a brand ambassador for years, I, there are days I moved 40 cases. Like, yeah. Well, like yeah. I, I mean, like it's not that much. Barrels of whistle pig are now 26 cases yep. and we, 26 cases we release, we did five barrels last year of, of whistle pig, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's really easy to accomplish. And, and part of what I'm screaming at the, the radio for is like, there's such a disconnect of, of uh, he accused, I'm going through, he accused you of creating fake profiles to bash his brand. Wow. And, uh, and, and I, and, and I thought what well, she didn't even bash you under her actual profile. Like, and quite honestly, I don't, I don't have that kind of time. I, I, I don't care enough about that at all. Like, I don't have that kind of time. I am working full time. I'm actually away right now uh, for work. Um, so, I, I great that that's what he thinks, but can it be further from the truth? Have you talked to your management at your store to kind of address uh, potential safety issues? We are in talks of it right now. Are there, are you still to like, as of now, as of today, still getting DMs from people bashing you? Uh, Yes. Yeah. I looked at his, uh, he's doing it from, it's funny that he would accuse you of creating fake accounts because he's using his slapdick, his, his spirits account to comment on his real coach jb account and for those who who need to follow this it's the real coach at a real coach underscore jb um i can also say because of course i've been doing my sleuthing even though i have i have literally not gotten a single comment dm or anything from any of like his accounts or i would assume people that follow him like i've gotten some weird like oh this guy is is posting because he wants more followers or he wants to make profit or he wants to get laid, like, you know, that kind of bullshit. But like, if you look at some of the comments on some of the people, like, cause I've had a lot of different women in the industry send me screenshots to kind of just keep track of everything going on. It's like people with zero posts and no followers. Like this guy probably has like a small army of his own fake accounts that he's just using to troll people at this point. Mm -hmm. I've had a few of those as well. And I mean, again, that's one of the main reasons, like for for my, my privacy, my sanity, like that's, I went private for that fact. Um, but yeah, I've had several of those myself. So, so, and we talked about this on the phone. What's the, what's the plan moving forward from this interview? What, what What's our hope and goal in terms of, uh, we just, that's it. This is it. We've addressed everything. I want no part of this. I'm pulling away. I I mean, the thing is, I, again, I didn't sign up for this at all. Um, I know he said um, he is who he is, and this is his thing. Um, You knew what you signed up for. Um, No, I didn't sign up to be harassed every single day since that post. Um, Neither did this community because I'm not alone in this. I I have a fantastic community. I have fantastic people like Nate, um, uh, John um, from Dad's Drinking Bourbon and several others that really just took a stand and spoke out. So, you know, for me going forward, I mean, I hope this kind of, I think everybody kind of knows the story and understands you know, the chronological order of all this stuff that's happened. And I'm not some evil conniving person um, trying to, you know, bring this downfall and not allow this to happen. I, I mean, I, I, I just want to go back to peace and quiet, honestly. So uh, he currently has 
uh, 51,000 followers. Mm -hmm. He's got a verified account. His latest post is a screenshot of another person that I've been following quite some time, Bourbon Insider. Uh, refers to her as a thirsty broad. And I mean, he, he basically shits all over, says, I wish I have as much time as, as, as these bottom feeders have. However, Nate, how many followers do you have? Uh, on one count, 82,000, the other 26,000. Yeah. So in the podcast, he calls out how he's got the only verified account and that everyone's looking for, for more followers to double their following. But you actually have more followers than he did. And you're one of the first people to speak out against him who, in fact, and I don't want to assume anything. Uh, is it fair to assume that you are in fact male, Nate? I am indeed. <laughs> yeah. So, so why would he, what, what's, what I think is bothering everyone is the obvious, why are you posting women? Why are you constantly screenshotting women? Why are you playing the, uh, I'm not misogynistic, I'm not, but, but men who with more followers, with more, you know, and I, I, you know, I, I only have a measly 13,000 followers, I'm nobody, but the show does significantly better than he could ever hope for in a show. Uh, and yet, like he just blocked me. He didn't screenshot what I tagged him in, you know, and, and he, and he calls out the fact that you tagged his podcast account and not him, the verified account as a way to sneak by him. I, I tagged his actual account. I tagged yeah. the real JB. I tagged slapdick Inc. I tagged everything I could. Oh. And I called him. I believe the exact quote was he looks like 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag. I directly addressed him and he just blocked me. He didn't even address it, but in, instead he'd rather tag and continue to pick. And, and in fact, I, I don't know if people are sending you updated screenshots, uh, Chrissy, but he, he went through some of your old posts and is trying to call you out as a hypocrite. And I just don't understand how anyone cannot see what this obviously is. Well, I mean, I think that's the thing, unfortunately, is that, um, taking those screenshots completely out of context. I mean, completely out of context. One of them in which he's using, so like when I actually teach people how to drink whiskey, because I'm a whiskey educator on top of a whiskey buyer, I teach people how to drink whiskey. So he's taken one thing that someone took and made like little I had koozies of and just screenshotted it and, you know, assuming it, it's, it's, it's meant to be something dirty and it's not. And you're referring to the screenshot of sip, swirl, swallow and blow. Correct. Which is the process in which you taste whiskey and he took it to be something vulgar. And so therefore you're a hypocrite for calling him misogynistic, even though you didn't. I didn't. And again, you know, like I can understand how looking at something like that and it's something as being a woman within this industry, I have always been very mindful of. I mean, there are some things that I, I'm not innocent by any means in, in some things, but, you know, like I can see how someone following that and him screenshotting that could easily turn around and assume the worst. And think like, here's this person, like I've seen, you know, like here's this person calling him out for this and for being inappropriate when she's posting things that are inappropriate. When in fact, if you actually knew something about whiskey, this community, um, that is what you do. That's how you teach someone to enjoy it. That's how you drink it. This is the disconnect he's having. Right. Like you're so out of touch with reality. My favorite thing about this is he screenshotted an old advertisement of a woman riding a turkey. And then he actually me photoshopped on. Right. Yeah. And, and then he tagged PETA. <laughs> <laughs> he, ta he tagged PETA like, <laughs> can you believe she's harming a turkey? Uh so, well, listen, I don't want to, I don't want to take up, uh, I wanted to get all of the facts out and just talk through and address some of the disconnect from reality. I wanted to throw a little shade at the guy because I, I he is purposely not addressing any male who's throwing shade. And in fact, he's attacking women who aren't really throwing shade. Like, 
hey man, I'm right here. I, I'm having an allergic reaction on my face right now from from something. You want to attack that? I mean, just, <laughs> I mean, there's there's attack me. Like you know, there's there's much more reason. If you follow Nate, there's plenty of things to to to. The guy's naked on half of his posts, and it's fantastic. <laughs> like there's 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 plenty of things to make fun of, man. Just uh, I don't understand. I do understand the the thing this the good thing to take away from all this is this brand is dead. Uh, it's not going to survive. It it was garbage to begin with. The label was trash. The bottle shape was, was trash. I, and for those who don't know, I've worked in branding, marketing, and brand development and label development for six years. I, if anyone is educated on to tell you that your bottle looks like shit. Hi, I'm Chris. Nice to meet you. Like I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you everything about this is wrong. And, uh, and by the way, the name sucks. Like how did that slip past the TTB? There's actually rules in both if you're a discus member, as well as TTB about vulgarities on labels. Uh, and, and even there's another rule he keeps breaking. It's actually a law. He keeps breaking. You're not supposed to advertise this as a whiskey in printed materials or in interviews at all, because it is misleading. Mm -hmm. You can't refer to as a flavored whiskey. It's, it's flavored whiskey, or, or I think the latest one was class type 149, but before that was class type 641, which is whiskey specialties. It's not whiskey. And to advertise in any printed materials or interviews that it is, is both misleading and illegal. So, uh, Please, if you've got anything to say, he can come on the show. I'd love to, dis- to address everything. Uh, uh, but I, more than anything, I thank you for coming on the show. I thank Nate for coming. Uh, if there's anything else you'd like to say or plead to the audience, uh, please do so. I mean, I think, you know, and I've said thank you to Nate like a thousand times <laughs> because I do appreciate the fact that he – you know, he used his platform. He didn't have to at all. And the fact that he did was, um, I, I think even before any of it, I was like, uh, you know, I, I don't want you to, I, I, I worry for him. Like, I didn't want him to lose anything at all for doing this. And I'm super appreciative to Nate and everyone else that has come together to take a stand against something like this. I mean, it's been as overwhelming and as awful as some of the um, negativity and the harassment has been, it's it's been overshadowed by the community and how well they have all come together and, you know, saying, hey, we got you. And like, just, I get daily messages of, are you okay? Is there anything you need? Like, so that component of it has been awesome. And, and I can't thank everyone enough I really can't. There's no, there's no words. Honestly, it's just, it's a lot. Well, uh, it makes me happy to see that not only I remember just a few years ago, and I'm sure Nate remembers this too. There was a while that the, that the industry itself didn't felt like the influencer community or the Instagram community or the Facebook community was a little full of itself and didn't really have an impact. And that has changed more Mm -hmm. brands than ever have single barrel programs because of social media. Uh, I mean, look at how we came together for Scott's trooper and his family. Uh, I mean, the the community here is as tight knit and as close and, and shout out to, to dad's drinking bourbon. I mean, the, 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 shout out to everybody. I mean, everything has just been so full of love and support. And, and I, I, I feel the exact same way. And I'm thankful that our community as a whole has rallied together to, and, and despite what he might think 50,000 followers on a verified Instagram account is as insignificant as your 40 dumb cases. So I, I am so happy to see someone with more followers speak up on this someone that uh, didn't ask for this and is handling it so well. Uh, thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you. Yeah. And, and I just want to say like, I, as much as I'm appreciative of people saying, you know, stuff like, thank you for like, you know, being an ally or being a champion for women. Like this is, this is the shit you should be doing every day. This is the way I was raised was to stand up 
and stand with women when it comes to bullying and harassment. Like, like I'm kind of upset that I've seen a lot of notable accounts not to take any action and not have a word and not say anything about something that's bullying. And, you know, this is not something where I felt like it was something that I could do. This is something that I felt I had to do. This is something that every man should feel like he needs to do is to call out the bullshit. And it's something that I have no problem doing. And I have gotten flack for it and I don't care about that. But if you see behavior like this, you call it out. Even if it's a DM, even if it's a comment, make that person know it's not acceptable. That is, that is the big thing. Just stand up. It's not that difficult. Like, I'm not some hero. I'm not someone that took a risk. I don't give a shit about any of that. What I saw was my friend being bullied and harassed by a complete bull, like, like just a bully. Oh, of a man. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm not, I was brought up to not stand for that. And I think every man should be that way. Like just screw it. There's, there's, there's a very, very deep seated vein of that kind of behavior in this industry as in my post, which a lot of people seem to just breeze over. Like it wasn't just a post about him. It was a post about how, women have been frowned down upon this industry for so many years, especially as brand ambassadors and ignored. And it's gotten a lot better in the eight years I've worked in this industry. It's gotten a lot better and it's going to continue to get better, but it's still something that is not addressed by a lot of men. And I think that that needs to come to an end just mm-hmm. it, for lack of a better term, man up. Just it's, it's a shitty situation and we got to fix it or do what we can to fix it. I mean, the women that have rallied behind Chrissy have been amazing. Like they have, pulverize this guy and whatever followers speak out it's one it's glorious to behold i haven't had to say a single thing other than dumping out a picture of the bottle of uh, uh, dumping out the bottle on a picture and putting on my toilet which it still is by the way it is my toilet paper toilet. <laughs> that's, that's not a joke it is and it will stay there yeah it, it's it's uh i think he opens that podcast i keep referring to with haters uh don't hate you they fear that they'll never become you. And I thought, what, what if someone who is far more successful in this industry is criticizing you? What if it's not just someone that, that just hates you and, and feels like they're not going to get there? I, I, I don't mean to, to make it about me, but I, I've sold more than 40 cases. <laughs> I, I, we have 12 states of distribution. You have one. And by the way, you don't have one anymore either. Like I, if I'm, if I have succeeded more than you and I'm telling you, Hey man, what are you doing? Like, does, how does that not get through to you? Like if it, there's people I've, I've talked to, uh, I'm intimidated by someone like Jackie's I can her impact. Uh, I, I love Nicole Austin. I had a great interview with her and what she's done I can never hope to ever come anywhere close to that. Mm-hmm. And if she were to tell me, Hey, Hey buddy, like we're friends. I love you. This does not look good. You need to fix it. I'm going to listen to her. I'm not going to think she's a hater as if I'm even on her fucking level. I, 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 I whew, we're, we're on the same page. Thank yeah. you so much for doing the show. We'll let it go. And uh, uh, one last time for those sitting at home, uh, specifically coach JB. Hey man, Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's going to watch this. I hope he does because on his last post, he go, he posted that girl, uh, the woman, sorry. That, don't Sorry, I had a little JB-ism there. Uh, he posted that woman and said, I wish I had as much time as these haters. You do. Every one of your last three posts, your videos, your, you're doing a podcast on it. You're doing more than they're doing. Mm-hmm. The screenshot he grabbed of her was just like, she goes, Hey everybody, good morning. Except Britney Spears, dad and coach JB. And yeah, that was, it was, it was a footnote in a, in an Instagram story and it ruined his day so much. He had to make a post about it. However, I called you a fat piece of shit and you just blocked me and moved on. It, it's, it's weak. It's weak. And, and I think that's what makes me so mad about it is uh, I don't think I've ever been this colorful on this podcast. And, no. Uh, listen to a lot of them and this is the most heated I've ever seen you (laughs) not without the presence of a stand-up comedian yeah yeah not not without a stand-up comic on the show have I ever been this I just it 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 bothers me when I see men pretending like the whole world's against them uh and that they are so strong when clearly you're not and it it, it, I mean I have I have like 
I have like 19 different ideas to follow up on that post, which the only reason I'm not going to do them is because obviously whatever Chrissy wants and wants us to, the guy's done. He's toast. It's done. Yeah. Like, yeah. like it's like, we, there's no reason to, to beat the dead horse as, as it were. But at the same time, like the guy is feeding off of this. Oh like, yeah. He's, as much as as angry as he seems, this is like this is like his Christmas. He he, he actually addresses that several times. I yes, won't he does. use I won't use the analogy he uses. Uh, it's disgusting. Yeah, it's disgusting. I would never uh, want to make that man be that way. Yeah. So I will say, uh, you know, uh, you, you bring up a good point. I'm giving a lot of time and energy for something so extremely pathetic as 40 cases. So I, I'm going to let it go. <laughs> We can move on. Chrissy, I know this is the first time we've met. I'm actually a very calm and level-headed guy. I appreciate I know, you. I, I, I know. I watch. I follow. Like, so I, I know. And that's, I think that's the other side of this, too. Like, even, uh, like, the people at my work, I'm usually very calm, very collected. And uh, when they saw how uh, visibly upset I've been, um, they know that this is something that's pretty serious. It's, you know, it's kind of rocked our little local community as well. Um, Because, you know, I've had several of the societies uh, speak out against him, as well as call for a full boycott without me having any involvement in that. Do you, did you, does your liquor store carry 818 tequila or brothers bond bourbon? Uh, I 818. Yes. 818. Uh, How many cases did you guys bring in to your store? Uh, one case. One case. I'm, I'm trying to think of a similar celebrity brand because I, I I think it was Twin Twin Liquors, Twin Liquors. I think it's Twin Liquors in Texas. Mm-hmm. They brought in a case of uh, 1,500 cases to make a wall into one store for Brothers Bond Bourbon, Ian Summerholder, Vampire Diaries. That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I, the delusion is what's bothering me so much. <laughs> I, I'm having a I mean, hard time. I'm having a hard time getting over it. I've questioning myself. Like I've over the past uh, two and a half, almost three years now, I've sold through my store. I've done just myself for the store. I've done about forty-five barrel picks. So I've done them. No one else has done them. Forty-five barrel picks. A lot of like, for instance, the Four Roses pick we did last, twenty-seven cases, one barrel. So you've done 45 estimate. Let's lowball it. 20 cases, 45 times 20 cases. You guys have done what's that? 80, 850 cases. Did I do that right? Somewhere in there. Somewhere in it's there. a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot. So anyways, all right, we'll let it go. Uh, thanks so much for doing this. Uh, this will Thank pass. You. This was cathartic for me. I hope it was a little cathartic <laughs> for you guys. <laughs> I mean, it's, we'll see. Um, just you keep it, keep ignoring it. The industry's on your side. This guy's insignificant. Uh, he's a million miles away, yeah. uh, smoking a cigar in his car. So you're good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> cheers. Thanks, All right, Cheers. Balcony's first ever year-round bourbon was an inspiration. It all had to work together. A blend of carefully selected ingredients, Texas-sized pot stills, and creative people determined to find the absolute best way to usher a new whiskey along. When you discover how it pairs with a meaningful moment, suddenly the feeling of drinking great whiskey becomes a whole lot more.